you seem to have a very definite style of running a race team. How would you describe yourself as a team owner? Vicious. I can't stand a job half done. And when I went to the racetrack and got beat, it was because the car wouldn't finish when it left the shop. And that was not my style. How did you translate that to your employees? A lot of times they got fired. And that, you know, yeah. it starts at the top and it comes down. But uh, work is what it takes. If you go to the racetrack and you hadn't done your job back at the garage, you might as well have stayed home. And sometimes we was at a disadvantage with the car or the motor or something of that nature. And I, cause it, I could accept that. But I didn't accept it very long. You know, I fixed it, got the problem fixed, and go win races. But when you're switching cars like I did, I'd be with Oldsmobile today and tomorrow I'd be with Buick or or Ford, or just a different car completely, not knowing what it's going to act like or nothing else. I didn't care because I knew we could fix it. And it was a better deal for me, and, and I had to have the best deal going because I didn't have the money to run it out of my pocket. I had to have good sponsors and good relationships with the motor companies. Saying that, uh, you know, I had to have the efficiency out of the people to get it done. Of all the drivers you had, and you had some definite Hall of Famers, if you had to win one race and you could have put any of those drivers in your race car, which driver would you have picked? Well, you know, I used to drive for myself, so I'd have got it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take, let's take no. Junior out of the equation. <laughs> Other than Junior Johnson... Bobby Allison, I had him when he was prime. I had Daryl, Kale, different ones like that. I had them in their prime. And when you got a driver in his prime, he is the best driver out there. And I never, ever threatened Daryl or Kale or somebody like that to get in their car and drive it. If I had to choose one driver, it'd been Leroy Robert. Leroy had no fear. And everybody said he didn't have no sense because he didn't have no fear. <laughs> and Kale and Darrell, they was fearless, but not as fearless as he was. I think he would have went deeper and went after it more so than them or Bobby or any driver that I had. Now, you were also a, a kingmaker in the sport. You brought R.J. Reynolds to the table, to NASCAR, as a sponsor. How did that work out? Well, Winston just came off on TV because the government had disallowed their advertisement. I knew that R.J. Reynolds had a lot of money where they'd been feeding the TV people and that's the first place I went to you know to start to get the money because uh, I knew they had it and I knew they was in the advertisements so big that there was a great possibility I'd come out of there with a sponsorship and when I told them how much money I needed they just laughed at me they said Lord have mercy we got 570 million dollars <laughs> in our budget and you need $800,000. So well, we need something a lot bigger than this. It hit me right away that if I got them in with NASCAR, I would get my sponsor easier that way than I would anyway. And I said, well, you just want to, you need to sponsor the whole sport. They said, well, how we go about doing that? I said, if you give me your contact person, I'll get Bill France to call him, and you can work it out from that point on, and that's exactly what happened. Now, was there ever anybody who came back to you 
and said, Junior, we appreciate that. That was that was big. And they, and they said more than that. They said they couldn't sponsor me because it's a conflict of interest. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was a little bit PO'd about that deal. <laughs> I got NASCAR in it and lost it myself. You helped broker the deal to put Dale Earnhardt and Richard Childress together when Dale lost his ride. I've always wondered, Dale had a sponsor in Wrangler, and was there ever any talk that he drive for you? Yeah, he wanted to race for me, and that's that's how... The guy that had the sponsorship at Wrangler would not do nowhere because, you know, I was a contact person there first. And he was a friend of mine. And he relied on me to do what I need to do to help them get where they need to be. And talking in terms of when he didn't have a somebody to go to for me to get the person in the place and the atmosphere that they needed to do the best job for their company. When Earnhardt, uh, they announced that, uh, that his owner was leaving, he come straight to me and wanted me to hire him and bring Wrangler and come on over there. I talked to him down there at Talladega for about a half a day trying to help him do what I thought he ought to do because I wanted to help her and Artie didn't. You know, he'd won that championship and he had a great opportunity to capitalize on it and he didn't have nobody to go to or nothing to do it. And he'd just about do anything I told. And I asked him, I said, well, what about going with Bud Moore? Bud Moore had lost his sponsor. And let me see if I could get a break in my operation to where I can hire you, and uh, I will. Well, he went down there for two years. I know I couldn't do nothing for two years because uh, my contract was that long. And about halfway through the year of the second year, him and Bud got uh, an argument over Earnhardt was running the cars too hard and he's blowing the motors up and all that. They almost split up before him, but I talked to Ben staying together at the end of the year. Well, at the end of the year, Richard Childress was running Ricky Rudd and Earnhardt couldn't go back over. And uh, I sold out to Warner Hodge and half of the team. Well, I had two teams in. Well, I need two sponsors. Well, I went and put Wrangler in Darrell's team. And I knew the Coors people out in the West. I knew them pretty good because yeah. I talked to them a lot, you know, when I'd go to Riverside and stuff. I called them up, and they wanted to sponsor Neil Bond. So I had my sponsors. Well, Budweiser calls me up, says, I'll give you twice as much money as you got now to sponsor both cars. And I said, well, Lord, have mercy, I got to take care. So I went to Richard Childress, and I said, if you go back and get Earnhardt and you all make up, I got a signed contract here you can have. You don't have to go no further. You've got a driver and a contract, money to race with. And they went back and did that, and I had Richard the contract because the, the Wrangler guy didn't like Darrell. He wanted Earnhardt, and I knew they'd fit because that tickled them to death. Well, it did tickle them to death. Well, I called the guy that worked for Bill Elliott. He's hunting for a sponsor. And I told him what, what went on with Coors. And I hadn't, did not have the contract signed with them. Or we verbally cut a deal. And I called them and told them I couldn't take the deal. And told them about Bill A. And that's how that Bill A. got there. Now, I was under the impression that you had put Dale with Richard Childress right after he lost the ride in 81. I put him to him twice. He went with Richard 
they made the, they had you know some kind of falling out, and I put him with Bud. Well, okay. Richard went and got Ricky Rudd. Well, him and Ricky Rudd didn't have the money to race on for for coming up here, so I went to Richard, told him and Earnhardt to get back together and get their stuff worked out, and I had him a contract. Earnhardt raced for Bud Moore in 83 and 84. Four. And you were prepared to replace Daryl Waltrip with Dell Earnhardt. That's right. How the course of NASCAR history would have been changed if that had been worked out? Well, you know, the Daryl did me a great job, and I ain't seeing it. Earnhardt would have done a better job. I, you know, because Daryl, I, I couldn't ask for a better job than Daryl did for me. He, you know, he just did it absolutely, uh, you know, about a perfect driver for what we wanted and the atmosphere and the publicity that we needed and stuff uh, through the years with Mountain Dew and so on and so forth with Budweiser and stuff. He, he was absolutely perfect for our, what, uh, what we had. Earnhardt would have uh, been a more explosive type thing and everybody says you'd want a whole lot more races with with Earnhardt than you would Darrell but you got to figure in that Earnhardt was harder on a car you know he'd go to front if he you know if he had to to tire the car up he'd still go to front but uh, Darrell took care of the car he went when he had to and he could get the job done. I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't say he could outdrive Earnhardt, but I guarantee he could hang with him now. He was, when he went after it, he'd go get it. 